Thanks for the returning listeners, and then we'll crack on with it. So, where are we? Columbus in the US, Hackensack. Sounds mm, painful. I want to go there. In the US, Smed- Smedic in the UK, Nanut in the US, Leicester in the UK, Gingin in Sydney. I'd go there. Gingin. Gingin. You can't drink a pink gin there, though, can you? Why? Well, it's Australia. I bet they don't even serve pink gin. I bet they do. No bloody pink shit in here, mate. That's it. Tony, Tony, what proper gin? Uh, or beer? What about the Sheilas? Yeah, Glass they, of white they wine. They beer too. What do you want of that? <laughs> Glass of white wine for the lady. Sydney in Australia, Staten Island in the US. You missed that Lister in Canada. Oh, Lister. <laughs> Boys and the Dwarf. Erling of Birkendorf in Germany. Falls Church in America. Brussels, Belgium. Berlin, Germany. London in the US. Ashburn in the US. And Washington in the US. Why can't they come up with their own fucking names? <laughs> New York? They just put New in front of it. It's still York. Used to be New Amsterdam. London? I mean, it's... It used to be New Amsterdam. That New York does sound better. It does. Better than New Amsterdam. Got them Dutch out of there, didn't we? <laughs> so what is a near-death experience? The term near-death experience, we're going to refer to them as NDEs. Just to save on my word count. Cool. See that? Sharing. Cutting down my word count for you guys. You've just upped it. <laughs> yeah. You just cancel all it out. No. <laughs> it was coined, NDE was coined in 1975 in the book Life After Life by Raymond Moody, MD. Since then, many researchers have studied the circumstances, content, and after effects of NDEs. So it's a distinct subjective experience that a minority of people report after a near-death episode. In a near-death episode, a person is either clinically dead, near death, or in a situation where death is likely or expected. These circumstances include serious illness or injury, such as from a car accident, military combat, childbirth, or suicide attempt. I mean, that's not a fun NDE, is it? No. Well, it can be any circumstance, can it? Well, yeah, but a suicide attempt one, you probably wouldn't see the, be seeing the good stuff in that, would you? Well, you might do, and then when you, you yeah. know, when you got brought back or whatever, you might be like, fuck, I don't want to do that. It might, you know, have a positive effect. Well, I thought you wouldn't, you know, you'd be seeing visions of lakes of fire and <laughs> suicide being a mortal sin, isn't it? Well, yes, if you're religious. Well, most pe- most religious people tend to have these, in my opinion. Well, this is the point I have with it. Everything is slightly different, isn't it? It's like every every ND is different. It's not the same. They don't all go to the same place, see the same things. There's some a lot are of in white light bollocks. Are in there. Some of that. Some they go through space. There's some of it they're just shown visions. Some they're in heaven. They meet Jesus yeah. or meet their relatives or a beloved pet. I think it's subjective, isn't it? To you know your own experience. Your own imagination, yeah. probably. It's just your own imagination, just like dreaming. It's probably what it is. It's a dream yeah, state. That's what I was thinking. It's like a lucid dream when all your all your different endorphins and things are going through your body and coursing through your feet. It's just it's just a dream, a hallucination, a hallucination, and then you get brought back somehow, and that's it. If you don't get brought back, you probably just die. As my friend was, I used to look after was dying, an old man. While he was in hospital, those last few days. He was in and out of sleep all the time, and at one point his daughters told me that he was like 
it sounded like he was sort of shouting to people on the, on the football field and his, his legs were sort of kicking because he used hmm. to like play football quite a bit and it's like he was replaying mm. the memories yeah. in his head and sort of acting them out a little bit while he was asleep and that you know that could be that light at the end could of the be. tunnel could be it could just be a dream it's happen- it, oh it's happening for, for a long yeah mm. gradually you sort of you know that light flashing before your eyes sort of thing maybe it happens a lot slower but it just feels fast you can say mm. i listened to a really good podcast today just out of by coincidence we're doing this tonight it actually popped up on one of my shows i follow google's listening it was called Demystifying Death. It was, it was a, an interview with a hospice nurse. And I thought, oh, that kind of fits what we're going to talk about tonight, you know, near-death experiences and all that. Yeah. She did touch on that. She said 90% of the time, people will start to see things. It could be relatives, it could be pets. One woman saw a fairy land on her plate and then just disappear. Hmm. Right? But she said, I'll only give them a month after that. And I thought, wow, so that's a common theme amongst... Mm. The dying is you start to see stuff. See stuff. In the last month of your life, you'll see something. Because mm. your body really kind of shuts itself down gradually. It knows it's what's happening. You, 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 sadly, you're born to die. It's going to happen. It happens mm. to all of us. It's mm. one thing none of us can escape from. Unless you're eating them adrenal glands. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so you won't be thirsty or hungry in the last few weeks. Yeah, because you, you know, your body's just like that. Shutting down. Don't need it. that. Yeah. Preparing you for it. I always think the light at the end of the tunnel is actually your tunnel vision as your eyes genuinely fade like into the middle. Later. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I always thought. That could be true. Could that be true? I think I've always kind of had that vision in my mind of what you just described there. It's almost like the closing of your eyes. And that's what, from the inside and that's that last little bit of light you fucking yeah. see and it's just but it's different it's not just closing your eyes it's your eye, like, it's, it's, it's like almost like your your, whole the eyes. circle of your vision gradually comes down to pinpricks it's like your eyes kind shutting of thing. down yeah not just closing they're shutting yeah. down and I think again maybe it might have been Terminator that kind of put that image in my head uh, yeah, from a very young age it's kind of spiralling it don't they mm-hmm. Well, NDRs have reported two types of experiences. You get your good one, pleasurable ones. These experiences involve mostly feelings of love, joy, peace, and or bliss, which could be your brain flooding your body with massive amounts yeah. of DMT yeah, and happy chemicals. Yeah, it could be like, you don't want to be conscious through this. This is going to be nasty and painful. Your body does have lots of ways of self-preservation in lots of different ways, whether it is the dulling of pain and things like that when it gets to a severe level yeah totally i mean think about it you're if you've suffered a traumatic event your brain will either a repress can repress that memory completely or create a false one that's a lot better to protect you so this is to me is exactly like the brain's protecting you it's like you, you're dying we know you're not too keen on this idea here's some feel-good drugs mm. yeah and i like that that's fine mm. A small number of NDEs have reported distressing ones. These experiences involve mostly feelings of terror, horror, anger, isolation and or guilt. Both types of NDEs usually report the experience was hyper real, even more real than earthly life. And they go from relatively simple with few or less emotionally intense features to relatively complex with many and or more emotionally intense features. So it can be really good, or it can be really, really, really bad. And imagine the the anger, guilt, isolation. I get that too. Terror, obviously, because you're dying. Maybe your brain at that point isn't capable of flooding you with DMTs, with DMT and 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 endorphins and the feel good stuff. Maybe it's not capable of doing that, and that's why you have this isolation, the fear. The anger, because you don't want to die. But then you've got adrenaline, yeah, is used in lots of different circumstances, isn't it? And sometimes adrenaline's fuel, like your own body's fuel and defence in a bad situation, but also in good situations, adrenaline can come through as well. So you play in a sport or something, you're mm. not only really having mm. fun, but the adrenaline's kicking through and surging. Or you get into a fight. 
adrenaline surges, it's yeah. danger. Fight or and, flight, yeah. And I wonder whether it could be something like that if you're in that turmoil part of your brain's going, oh, I'm dying, I'm shutting down this, that and the other. And it's like, right, give it some adrenaline, give it some... It, mm, pump yeah. And that brings on the, and the fear and the horror. and the... Maybe depending on the, the mental state of the person in whatever circumstance they are nearly dying or dying then they, that's what creates their visions in the fact that like, maybe it's ju- it is just purely subjective. Sometimes it can come out as a nightmare, sometimes it can come out of pure pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there's no underlying nothing. It's just, that's it. It's just one way or another, your body coping with whatever's being put into it. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Just interesting... You get the two, two ones. You are getting negative ones. I suppose that's also the manner of your near death experience, isn't is it? Is there any middle of the road ones? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, where's my mellow buzz? Like I went to work, dreaming I was at work. I don't want to do that. Now. No, no, it's like <laughs> that's a hate nightmare, your job. isn't it? <laughs> no, if, you, if you like me, you don't hate your job. I don't fucking love it. I don't love being there, but right. I don't mind being there. So is is that is would that be like your kind of middle ground equivalent? Well, no, my middle well, my middle ground is being slobbed on the sofa playing the PlayStation. This That's my I mean. middle ground equivalent. So, I'm not going to work. I'm not, <laughs> I'm just not featuring any near death experience of mine. That but I you know to. what I mean? Like, is anybody having visions of shit, just like have these kind of near death visions of just a mundane, normal mm. fucking nine to five? normal life or well, I, I guess <laughs> the, the story that Claire told with the the football is the closest you get to that isn't it I guess so mm. you don't want to be at work after death Pete uh, <laughs> that was just an example of a mundane <laughs> yeah. thing that's not like ultra offensive no, he, he, or he, nice either he was chuntering on about things at work as well so maybe that's the middle ground maybe the middle it's ground the normal maybe. life normal day a daily grind but then he, he, see, the difference with a near-death experience is somebody that's nearly died and they've come back to life, whether yeah. they've, they've actually fit, uh, technically died and been brought back to life by CPR or whatever. You've got to be clinically or, dead. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. But you do have to also be back alive. So you, you couldn't really use your old mate as, a, as no, an no, example no, no, no. They, I was just he, using that as an example of like how we you know sometimes like regret, the brain starts yeah, to regress, regress and that or, mm. or replay things well that's it yeah mm. I suppose that's where the measure the mixed one comes in because if you're replaying your life you're going to have those intense emotions of pleasure you know having fun doing what you loved and you're also going to experience the lows aren't you now, the classic pleasurable NDE includes four phases that tend to happen in a certain order. However, each NDE is unique, it can include any combination of phases, and phases can occur in any order, and they can even overlap or occur at the same time. Trippy. That just contradicted itself in one sentence, <laughs> didn't it? They it's... tend to happen, but not always, basically, that's what they're saying. Any two people describing the same general phase will describe differences between their two experiences. So the phase that often occurs first can be termed disassociated because pleasurable NDEs no longer feel associated with their physical bodies or with any particular perspective. They feel detached and completely peaceful without seeing, hearing or feeling anything in particular. They sometimes describe a floating sense of freedom from pain and a complete well-being. That's, that that's sounds the best one, doesn't it? That sounds the one. That, <laughs> this is the only one I've ever encountered, not personally, but personally known. My old friend, and I lived in South Wales, she drowned as a child. Didn't know her when she drowned, but she drowned as a child and she was dead for about six minutes or f- a few minutes. Mm. It was it was like she was dead, but she said, she was. I think she was about ten, so she was able enough to know what was going on do you know what I mean she knew she was drowning Mm. it got to the point where she said she was underwater and she knew she was drowning that was it 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 was over but she said she felt so relaxed she said she never felt more relaxed in her life and and I think she had like a this near death experience from what I can tell sounds like it but yeah but that's all I can remember 20 odd years ago when when she'd be telling me this story I yeah 
this phase, I'd argue, is also possibly the last bits of medicinal drugs in your system if you're if you're in the hospital. The morphine. The morphine, the yeah. whatever they're giving you. Yeah. It's like that's like there's a lot. There's got to be a lot of that, hasn't there? But they don't always happen in hospitals, do they? No, no. We're saying if you're in hospital mm. and you get this first, then that could be the could be the drugs, mm. the last of the drugs kicking in. In the naturalistic phase, NDEs say they be, uh, become aware of the natural surroundings, typically their bodies and the surrounding area, from a perspective outside their bodies. They usually say things looked and sounded like normal, but unusually clear and vivid. They often also often say they had unusual abilities, such as being able to see walls and also see through them, and being able to hear the unspoken thoughts of people nearby. Oh. There are ones where they've done a they've literally asked someone to recount what they saw mm. and they literally, they're literally like, oh my God, you brought me back, kind of thing. And there was a trainer on the ledge, you know, a shoe on the ledge outside the hospital. A sneaker. A sneaker. For American And she's friends. like, why is there a sneaker on the ledge? And they're like, what do you mean there's a sneaker on the ledge and someone pokes her out the window? And I'm like, oh, fuck, a sneaker. Mm. People have described watching themselves being shocked back. Mm. Yeah. I think it's probably the most common. You're hearing, you're watching yourself as they're trying to bring you back. I believe there was experiments conducted where they actually put like pictures on the top of uh, yes, you're right, yeah. wardrobes. Yeah. That, like closets kind of in the, within the room. So if anyone does have a near-death mm. experience... And they were like... Floating above... What's the, what's the picture that, on yeah. there? Yeah, tell us what was on the top of that. Mm. And... Yeah, I, I can't remember the result, but I remember like watching something was, and it was talking about it. I was like, oh, interesting kind of thing. There were certainly a few cases where it was spot on. Yeah. yeah. But you also never know whether someone's blabbed a little bit. You know, some orderly's taking them in and going, if they ask you what picture's on the wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You never know, do you? If, if you were the, the person conducting that experiment, the orderlies wouldn't know. It would just be... I know, I, I, it wasn't a formal experiment. It was like something the hospital staff mm. would do, mm. kind of thing. Yeah, they were curiosity. They did publish results. I think a fair few people who claimed to have had the ND, NDEs said, like, "Oh yeah, I, I saw the picture on the top, but maybe I couldn't see what it was." Or they described some people described it perfectly. Mm. And I guess that, that's a weird one, isn't it? Because you can't. You can't really explain that with your brain dying. But then again, you, you can in a way. because, Well, you can explain the first bit, the floating above the body, the sense of... Because that's what your brain's pick, making your picture. It's making you look at them working on you. Because mm. that wouldn't be a pleasant one, would it? But then you got people that say they can have an out-of-body experience from this, from near-death experience. Well, that's but exactly what this can, is, isn't it? An out-of-body experience. Can, Induce it through like meditation, and something like that. claimed to be able to, yeah, 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 yeah. astral so, projection as well. Projection, so, yeah. wouldn't that be a great experiment just to fucking debunk that one, wouldn't it? Really, I've always fancied trying to learn astral projection, <laughs> see if it can do it just as a test. Can you learn it, or is it something? Well, people claim you can learn, yeah, it, yeah but yeah. you've only got their word for it, haven't you? Crowley claimed, as to Crowley, used to claim to be able to fuck on the astral plane. <laughs> of course he did. He was in, uh, I think he was in India, and his <laughs> one of the women he was having a, was fucking now and again was in London, and they met up on the astral plane and had sex. <laughs> kind of like that idea. <laughs> How does that work? Or if sex you, like, you tell me. Does your body just sort of like, you know, you're just lying there, and all of a sudden your just body just sort of shivers and just ejaculates. I think your body, your spirit is out of your body, so you, you, you're ejaculating in the astral plane. Astral ejaculation. Astral ejaculation. <laughs> Spiritual ejaculation. So you're not physically coming. Maybe you do get back and you've got a damp patch, you can say. <laughs> Maybe that's what ectoplasm is. Yeah. Yes. Oh, God, does that mean what Slimer was doing what I think he was doing? <laughs> I think so. Oh, man! That's nearly ruined Ghostbusters for me. <laughs> nearly. <He> nearly. <laughs> he jizzes all over... What's his face in the first bit? Ray, isn't it? Ray, Peter. Peter, he, yeah. He's Peter. Bankman. Yeah. He's a, I see him, Ray. He's an ugly little spud, isn't he? I think he can hear you, Ray. <laughs> and then he jizzes all over it. Yeah. In these... So, let's go to the next one, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> 
quite fittingly, the supernatural phase. The pleasurable NDE meets beings and environments that they do not consider to be part of the natural world. They may meet deceased loved ones or other non-physical entities, i.e. Jesus, Allah, Buddha, Mohammed, Mohammed, who else is the Hare Krishna, is he dead? <laughs> God knows. The guy from what is the guy from the Waco Siege might be there. <laughs> if you, if you, Heaven's if, Gate. Heaven, Heaven's Gate guy might be there. <laughs> oh man, how depressing would it be if you got to the spiritual phase and it was a guy from Heaven's Gate and he's like, I'm sorry, but in the afterlife you have no balls. <laughs> I think it's vanish. <laughs> uh, no, he, he, he takes your balls and then vanishes. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you guys don't know that at Heaven's Gate, do you? They, they like they, 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 they keep on the eunuch idea. They, they, they cut off on it. Oh, I think it was the balls because he had testicular uh, cancer. Uh, Some of them were eunuchs. They went that far. He's looking at me blankly. Heaven's Gate. Check out the episode we did a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. Halibut Comet. They killed themselves. Happened in the nineties. There was a cult. Never heard of it. No. Well, you're missing out. <laughs> so I can check say. it out. It's fucked up. They say communication with these beings is mind to mind rather than spoken. They say they went to extremely beautiful environments in which objects appeared lit from within. That sounds nice. I like that. They sometimes say they heard beautiful music unlike any worldly music they've ever heard. So it's not who the fuck is Alice by Roy Chubby Mm. Brown. The cantina music from Star Wars. Oh God! (laughs) (laughs) I've got this fraternity, this lemon jar jar binks fraternity. Oh, Annie! Oh, you promised me you'd never do that. Lisa, love you, Annie. Oh. Lisa, jar jar binks. Oh, you open good hell. Shuddering. You don't want a jar jar binks force ghost, do you? No, you don't. You can't even flush out the airlock. Oh, man. It's terrible. That would definitely be your hell, wouldn't it? Just a bunch of Jar Jar Binks jumping around all the time. Yeah. With excitement. I'd be like Doom Guy in that scenario. You know, the computer game Doom. <laughs> you don't know the computer game yeah, Doom. Of course I do, but what I'm saying is, no, because everyone you kill, they mul- they just double. You, you <laughs> then that's how, just, that's how I'm spending eternity, Pete. Just, just killing Jar Jar Binks yeah. for him to double every time you do it. Yep, Ashley says, well, like my heaven. <laughs> There's an endless supply of Jar Jar Binks and I've got a chainsaw. Yeah, but they're riding giant spiders, clown spiders. Well, the only weapon you've got is a toothpick, actually. Oh, right. That's definitely hell then. <laughs> <laughs> Jar- an eternal army of Jar Jar Binks riding clown spiders and all I've got is a toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't even kill myself. Oh, that's a distressing NDE. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> We've just planted that in your head now. So yeah. It doesn't ever happen to you. Yeah. That's what you're going to see. Oh, I don't believe in an afterlife. I will find a way to come back and fucking haunt you. <laughs> <laughs> now, they often say they moved rapidly through a tunnel or void toward a light and then entered the light, only to discover the light was actually a being. They say they felt completely known and completely loved by this being. That's so Jesusy, isn't it? Though? It's very Jesusy. So that so that's every Christian Catholic that's ever <laughs> had this put in inverted commas. Oh, we all have, haven't we? Protein. In the Western world, we've all we've all got this as a an image in our mind, haven't yeah, we? Yeah. We've had it put into us as as, as children. Then Some of us have. more than others. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't blame don't put your repressed memories onto me, Mike. <laughs> We know about you and Father O'Malley. I want to know if they're repressed. Well, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> you you were Father O'Malley, weren't you? <laughs> no, I was far too young. You came back, you went into your future. You <laughs> just abused me. You talk in your sleep, Mike. He sits and watches you when you're sleeping, <laughs> taking notes. <laughs> He's like the sleep psychiatrist. Right. I'm not staying awake off the night do that. <laughs> Fuck that. Listen to me farting in my sleep. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly a fart of despair. 
<laughs> smells like despair as well. It smells like death in here. And now he's mumbling apples. <laughs> what? Apples? We like them apples. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm staying awake on that. Sleep's the most important thing to me in the world. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Don't get enough of it. Anywho. <laughs> All the, so they they say they completely felt completely known and really loved, and they sometimes experience a life review. So that's your life flashing before your eyes. Then don't actually. fancy that. <laughs> I don't fancy it. this is your life with Jesus. <laughs> you sat in your room and played on the PlayStation. <laughs> hey, how many times did you masturbate as a teenager? <laughs> I actually think that's a heaven record. We can't. As a teenager, yeah. you stopped. I'm masturbating oh, right now, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're the only guy in heaven with a yanket, <laughs> a blanket for masturbating under. <laughs> I'd use a pillow. What? <laughs> <laughs> All the same time, they reviewed and re-experienced and experienced being on the receiving end of all their actions throughout life. Some pleasurable NDEs say they went through the light seeing cities of light and knowledge. Oh, like that chap who... Oh, what was his name? Donald? Astral Plane episode, Astral Plane it? episode, yeah. What was his name? He was a lawyer, so he was trustworthy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, because they're well trustworthy. They don't lie for a living at yeah. all. The trained liar was completely trustworthy. But yes, he had one of them mm. kind of things, didn't he? Because he didn't have the NDE, he just met the dude in the street. That's it. The final phase of the pleasurable NDE is a return to the physical body. About half of them say they chose whether or not to return. When they chose to return, it was, it was because of a love connection with one or more living people. The other half say they didn't choose to return. <laughs> I'd be the other half. <laughs> Fuck this. I've got to not dead then. Well, they were either told or made to return. Oh. And they were suddenly just back in the... So this is the... It's not your time, Claire. Well, it's like that goat... The bit on Ghost, isn't it? The film Ghost, mm. when, you know... I was thinking about that film not long ago back, actually. Thinking I might rewatch that, because I haven't watched it for about 30 years. Cheesy, innit? It used to creep me out as a kid. Did it? Yeah, the fucking demons dragging you to hell. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Sounds like, like shattery, shattery things, aren't they? Yeah, they're creepy as fuck. Didn't about think it. much about it. Scared the shit out of me. Yeah. <laughs> I was about nine at the time. <laughs> Not tame for you at nine, mm. Matt. I was, I was watching that shit with my mum at about that age, though, because mm. she loved it, because she loved Patrick Swayze. What? Well, yeah. I was going to get taken by the, the white people. The... <laughs> the so shark. you don't want to be taken by the black people. You're no. going with the white people. Is that, so, that, film, that is so racist, for Claire. For sake, on the, at the end of the film, everyone, they're all the, the people that mm. like, light the heifer. I was getting taken by them, Mike. So, cause, yeah, know. that was fine. But you don't know, do you? You yeah. could be taken by the other people. What if it's the other way round? <laughs> That's not really, he's nodding at me here, going, you're going to be taken by the <laughs> people, please. I, would, I wouldn't do such a thing. What if it's the other way round? They're just lulling you into a false sense of security, like, oh, come into the light, look at our, look at us, look at us here. Yeah. And then it's like, you get there, and they're like, right, you're fucked there. And they're like them things from that series, what was it called? From. From. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> them weird vampire things. Yeah. I, was, I was told about that earlier on, actually. Weird. I've never heard of this program ever how weird is that right mm. first time i heard about it was at lunchtime today talking to my friend at work and then you've just mentioned it now how <laughs> weird is that yeah. it was, it was fucking it, brutal to be fair is it a foreign no it's no. american well it's a theory in that respect yeah right okay i'm not giving it a watch it's it's, watch. it's pretty brutal to be honest yeah it's got the black guy that lost in it yeah, he said that as well, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what he said. How like, oh, weird is that? And that's the only person he described it. He's like, oh, you've watched Lost of me. I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, you know the black guy with the kid? I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, he's in it. <laughs> wow. How fucking weird is that? He's Locke also on oh, Matrix as well. Like the Matrix films. Yeah, he's in yeah. Reloaded. I always like that. Is that the one where the dude's in the mech suit? Yeah. At the end. Oh, that's yeah. a great scene. That's how I want to go. 
That's what my, that's what I want my NDE to be. <laughs> oh god. I want to be in a loader. No, no, fuck that one, that mech suit with the massive guns. <laughs> I'll, I'll be happy with... Firing into a swarm Ripley's, of squids. Ripley's loader, I'll be happy with that. Oh, no. That's too much effort. We'll be in one of them one day anyway, won't we? Less time. That'll yeah. be like our progression as forklift drivers. AI will take over before we have them. Nah, AI, AI can't do what I do. They can, they will be able to. Nah. They'll be able to drive a lorry from one end of the country to the other in ten years. We'll be trained on the maintenance of them. So both me and Pete and yourself will be at work? Yeah, well, I'd imagine if you're a forklift driver and you've got half a brain, they'll teach you how to fix them yeah. when they go wrong. I doubt it. So we'll be out of work then. My little mistake. Yeah, we'll be fucked. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You're going to have to go to fucking university to do that, aren't you? Nah. It'll be really yeah, six or four if quite fucking easy. It'll be simple. No, it's just a robot, isn't it? Yeah, but Mike, these are made by the lowest bidder for dirt cheap. They're going to be idiot proof. Anything, you know, you know, they're going to be... And if you do have to... If it is completely broken, you just send away for a new part and put it in. That's going to be it. Some of the forklift repair dudes that come round ain't the brightest sparks, so it can't be <laughs> that difficult to be a forklift engineer. Fair enough. They're not, they're not complex machines. No, pipes and... That's pretty much it's it. all hydraulic. Pipes and a battery. <laughs> the only thing that will replace... Me and Pete is an AI brain. In fact, I heard a story today. Someone put an AI in a fighter plane and it beat the human pilots 100% yeah. in dogfights. Oh, dear. And, of course, if you put AI in a plane, you can then make it do more stuff at higher G because you haven't got to worry about the squishy person inside. Mm. So, yeah, Skynet's live, man. We sat next to the pilots and the dog queue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, so this goes as distressing types of NDE. Obviously, they're not as fun as the pleasurable ones. And they, there's four types of distressing ones. They appear in order from most to least often reported. Most of them describe the powerless type as having the same phase as a pleasurable one. But they say they felt powerless while this experience was happening to them. So they resisted or afraid or were angry. In the nothingness type, they say they felt as though they did not exist... Or they were completely alone in a total and eternal void. Oh, Sounds like heaven. I quite like that. <laughs> oh, finally, some fucking peace and quiet. Yeah. Oh. Where's the PlayStation? It should be perfect. It's a void. There's no PlayStation. Oh, I bet there is. <laughs> in the torment type, they say they're in ugly or scary landscapes, sometimes with evil beings, annoying noises, frightening creatures and or other human spirits in great distress. Only a couple of people have described the worthlessness type in which they felt negatively judged by a higher power during a life review. So, so you are getting a... You're not watching your life flash before your eyes. You're getting mm -hmm. judged, man. Oh, well, you know, when you were 15, you nicked them penny sweets out of Woolworths. <laughs> That's straight down to hell. Oh, I'm <laughs> fucked then. Yeah. Yeah. I robbed Woolworths blind when I was a kid. You wore mixed fabrics on the Sabbath, down to hell. <laughs> I even stole a Liverpool scarf I did when I was like 14, I think. Mm. It was terrible, that was. From Woolworths. I, from Woolworths. Ironically, yeah. stealing a Liverpool scarf. He put them out of business as well. <laughs> <laughs> but who is this cunt that's judging you? Who the fuck are you to judge me? Jesus. There's only one fair way. Judge by yourself. I was just about to say it. <laughs> With Red Dwarf in it. Yeah. <laughs> you only be yourself, yeah. yeah. Oh, right, oh. get out of this one, smeghead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, judge me by <laughs> the dwarf. Fighting to the death. Or life. On a rotating table armed with heavy sticks like in Flash Gordon. Yeah, man. Yeah. With some high tempo music in the background. Of course. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good, that. Yeah. Jesus. Whoa. Or whoever it is that's quizzing you. I suppose it's like the Bill and Ted thing where you just challenge death to Twister. <laughs> I mean, do they know how to play modern games? I mean, they they up with board games, this, this de deity? Yeah. They up with board games. <laughs> Challenge him for a game on Clash of Clans. Yeah, yeah. Tell you what, two out of three on COD. Uh, <laughs> is he just Jesus now to play yeah. COD? Well, Presumably he wouldn't. That's Hell you. Drivers. That's you. He ain't playing that. 
your trump card is cod. Yeah, or hell divers. Thou shalt not kill. <laughs> so he can't <laughs> shoot you. <laughs> no, but it's not real, though, is it? Does it matter? He might be a badass. <laughs> well, you know, it's a risk. Park. <laughs> <laughs> it's a risk I'll take. <laughs> Remember, Jesus, thou shalt not kill. <laughs> Picks up two M16s like that. Come on, bitch! <laughs> I'm Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, no offence any people that do believe in him. I am only joking. Some distressing NDR said that they had once that once they gave up fighting the distressing NDE and, and surrendered to it or they won or once they sincerely asked for help from a loving high higher power, their distressing NDE became a pleasurable NDE. Only very, very rarely of NDEs turned from pleasurable into distressing ones. So the, the beings from from, that doesn't happen very, very often? No. Good job. So that was the good ones and the bad ones? Those are the types of the good and the bad. Oh, there is, a, there is the middle one section. Yeah, so the middle one, it says about someone going to work, getting on their foot. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Tooting along. <laughs> radio on. No, they don't even get the radio. That's what makes it so middle ground. The radio's yeah. not there. So you just sat there with your own thoughts. I just play YouTube on my phone. Well, lots of people have them. Apparently in the United mm. States alone, at least several million people have had them. Of course. Of course yes, but US. several million people also think the US is ruled by lizards. Well, they're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that NASA symbol? <laughs> it's always back to the NASA symbol for you, isn't it? <laughs> always back to that. <laughs> <laughs> they're equal opportunity experiences people from many cultures and backgrounds and of all ages from infants describing their NDs once they could talk to elderly people have had near death experiences they've been reported by males and females from all levels of education of all religions as well people not involved in any religion or spiritual practice people of all social wealth levels Heterosexuals, homosexuals, LBGTQI plus one. Yeah, it's people with mental illness, people without mental illness, people with various beliefs about life and death, people with a life history of good or bad actions. None of these aspects of a person has made it possible to predict who will or who will not have a near-death experience or whether it will be pleasurable or distressing. See, that's quite interesting, which leads me down the path of your brains just going, oh, you don't want to see that, you don't know what's coming next, buddy. Hmm. That's, that's my theory on this, it really is. Mm. But, I am a spiritual void. I am not spiritual in any way. I have no belief in the, in, in, in the spirit world, in, in religion, anything like that. So this is preaching to the wrong choir for me, you know? My opinion's already skewed. So in, until you are experienced one, you, you wouldn't really believe in this? And even then I'd come back round and probably, you know, unless it properly, like, spoke to me in some way. Like you did actually float up and see the paintings on the top mm. of the wardrobe and you could describe them exactly. That's the yeah. only way. Yeah, or, or Blue's there, my, like, my old dog. And, and Jeebus. But that could be you. Yeah, yeah that's just your yeah. imagination. Yeah. But unless they, they tell me something... No, but if they tell me something absolutely fucking life-shattering, like some truth I failed to fucking miss about myself or something like that, some... some anything. Ben, you've got AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> you're not you going, need to you're get not back, back and get treated. <laughs> well, you know what, baby? I don't know, something... You shouldn't have fucked that monkey in the jungle. <laughs> Everyone was doing it. <laughs> Mike was there. You're on your own. Claire was there. Pete was there. Everyone was there. We were trying to stop you. <laughs> you were all fucking monkeys. I saw it. You give him the acid. <laughs> the Iron Oscar I was on. <laughs> Clearly. But you know, as you know, that's just went forward with me. It's just your brain preparing yourself for the fact that yeah, you know it's going to happen, but you want to go through it as pleasurably as possible. And maybe the people who have bad ones is just their brain just being a bastard. Maybe they really hate themselves deep down. I think it's just a dream more than, like, just a dream. 
I do. I think I, I'm pretty sure it's that because it's just the way the human body and the human mind works. To yeah. sort of protect itself, isn't it? Yeah, you, put, you make you, everything a little bit fuzzy. Yeah, know? that's it. Your brain's protecting itself. It's protecting you. Yeah, yeah. Protecting its own bloody feelings, essentially. It's like, oh, yeah, I feel a bit better. It's your. It's it's protecting your mental state even as you're dying. Like, hey, this is this is the worst thing that's going to happen to you, bud. Here's some DMT and some feel-good chemicals. And then you wink out. And the body already knows it's shutting down. The brain already knows what's happening. Well, that's the thing as well. You, you hit that's why that. it keeps you unconscious, doesn't it? You hit on that, then, with the DMT thing, because that is something that is produced at that, at that point. And only that point. Really? Pretty much. I honestly couldn't say. You must get it some hits at some point. How does the body make these chemicals? It's fucking crazy, isn't it? Yeah. So the ultimate high is to get... It's, it's flatliners. It's flatliners, yeah. But, yeah, but isn't this why you have that fucking asphyxiation? Fucking... Pe- like people... Autoerotic that... asphyxiation. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe there's like a link with that. Well, that's like in, in that, in that, It's that lucid side. Your body starts to go... Oh my god, and that's why you get that adrenaline, whatever it is, DMT. I guess, like, I see what you're coming from, because like, it's like a pixie, yeah. isn't it? Pixie, when you take yeah. pixies. Exactly, yeah. When you, for people who don't know what pixies are, it's when you're smoking the devil's lettuce. You it's like in, marijuana. You, you inhale a massive amount, someone literally chokes you until you lose consciousness, and then when you wake up. Don't try this at home, kids. No. <laughs> I doubt they even do that shit anymore. And when you wake up, it feels like you've been in a different place. Yeah. Yeah? It felt, feels like time... It feels like you've been asleep for eight hours. Yeah, yeah. You wake up and you're like, fuck, well, not that I would know. <laughs> it's the same effect as when you actually just faint. It's exactly mm. the same effect. I, 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 I put it down to the chemicals that your brain fucking produces at these intense moments... Well, let's look at the difference in cultures, because that's interesting. So Western cultures, such as Europe and Australia, seem similar to the US, because we're all pretty much fucking related, aren't we? We all have a very similar culture. I ain't related to them, bloody. <laughs> <laughs> Dingo worshippers. <laughs> or them, them seppos. <laughs> them criminals. Studies, under. studies in non-Western cultures have shown some differences, but also underlying similarities. For example, spiritual beings and encountering a border between the earthly and spiritual domains are common features in Indies worldwide. On the other hand, in countries where tunnels have been constructed as part of the infrastructure, NDE descriptions may include mention of movement through a tunnel, and in countries without such infrastructure, people don't mention them. So but that's interesting. So, like for example, Muslim, Hindu, they wouldn't see a tunnel. Right, OK. Because their religion... Is that, what, is that what that's saying? No, it's saying, if, say, for example, we... In, oh, in the, infrastructure, oh, infrastructure, literal physical infrastructure. So it's like they've got walkways under roads, underpasses, as we call them, but got you. some are like quite big, aren't they? They go under motorways. If they've got lots of them, is it... I thought it meant part of the structure of the religion. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. The actual infrastructure of the country. Yeah, so like underpasses, things like that. Yeah, so if you live in... We might be more prone Kenya, to Kenya, for example. Yeah. You're not going to see... There's no, there's no underpasses in no. Kenya. Probably Again, not. this goes down to tell you, surely, then that, that kind of backs up the imagination thing. It's your dream because it's the state, the only things that you know, and that's what you're seeing, like with the religion thing. Yeah. Like you're seeing Jesus because that's what you believe in. That's what your brain's going to fucking take you to. Does that mean that Mike's going to see Yoda? Definitely. Of course. He's my spiritual master. <laughs> but yeah, it's one of them, <laughs> like... <laughs> the Arabs and that they'll they'll finally see what Muhammad looks like. Well, yeah, I bet he doesn't look like any of the cartoons. I bet he's a chick. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> no, I am joking. But no, too late. It's the same that war has been declared. It's the same with Jesus, isn't it? Though, no, yeah, all the Americans and that they'll be expecting a white dude with long hair. They're going to get a big shock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely got darker skin than a white dude that yeah. we always see portrayed. You mean he's not Obi Wan Kenobi? <laughs> Pray not. Oh man. A person's culture, exp- personal experiences, almost certainly influence the exact form 
that those features take and the experiencer's interpretation of them. It is now generally understood that NDEs have a deep structure, general features that occur to people across cultures, a cultural surface structure, specific forms that those general features take which relate to the NDR's culture, and a personal surface structure, a version of a specific form that is unique. So you're getting cultural influences, you're getting personal influences. Yeah, that's consistent. But there's also a underlying structure that is across all cultures, yeah? Yeah, the four types. Enough features, yeah. The four types always match up. Children's NDEs are especially interesting because the younger the child, the less the child's NDE has been influenced by culture. Children's NDEs do, however, have the same features as adults' NDEs, just in a simpler form. Child NDEs say they felt different from most of the children while they were growing up. But how do you know that that child hasn't been influenced by culture as they've got older? That whole paragraph is a very nothing paragraph. Mm -hmm. It said absolutely nothing in all those well, words. Well, it's basically saying... Yeah, it's saying they have the same child. features, but the younger the child, the less you're likely to see Jesus. Because you don't know about Jesus. And there'll be a lot in a simpler form. So basically, again, it is just... It's their dreaming. It's a dream, isn't it? It is just a dream. Yeah, and because they've got limited life experience. They're only dreaming about the simpler form of what they've been experiencing. Mm. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is raise a kid in a, in a wardrobe or a cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see straight away. Um, I can no. see straight away that the medical association is not going to sanction this. But please continue. Then throttle it, <laughs> right? And then bring it back to life and see where you've been. <laughs> but I'm in the cupboard, you bastard. <laughs> Well, they're, they're NDE, you just going to be a life without being throttled and living in a wardrobe. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be living in a wardrobe and getting throttled. And that's their life flashing before their eyes. How long are you going to do this? I'm ethical, I must admit. How long are you going to do this for? Because at some point... Well, only until the child can speak. Oh, right, is that it? <laughs> that's, a, that's okay, then. How are they going to learn to speak? If they don't, I'll throttle it. <laughs> win, 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 win. Where's the interaction good, though? The throttling. Yeah. <laughs> you speak, speak to them while you're... All. You, start, you read them a story while you're choking them with one hand. <laughs> Play an audio book. Yeah, you can leave talk radio on for them. <laughs> oh, I don't think the medical board no, will approve it. No, probably not. Red tape, eh? Uh, <laughs> I just see too many flaws in the experiment. <laughs> well, people who have had an NDE during a suicide attempt also are of particular interest. An important finding in research is that although ordinarily a person who has attempted suicide is more likely to try again, suicide attempters who have an NDE, and have an NDE are much less likely to try again. They say they have learned their lives are purpose. They see life as a gift. They have learned that when they face hard times, their job is to deal with the problem constructively. They see all life experiences as opportunities to deepen their ability to love and to increase their knowledge. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, positive outcome. Also of interest are NDEs that involve a vertical perception. Accurate description of specific unique events happening around the NDR's uncon unconscious physical body that the person could not have seen or heard and that the NDE could not have figured out through it's NDE -er, I mean. NDE -er, could not have figured out through reasoning and logic most of these descriptions involve the presence of uh, presence physical appearance or activities of people nearby or of family members even at a distance there are also reports of, an, of NDE vision in persons blind from birth one case of ver ver vertical perception involved NDE vision and hearing a woman undergoing and hearing in a woman undergoing brain surgery who was fully anaesthetized, whose eyes were taped shut, and whose ears were plugged with small speakers emitting loud noise. Oh! So they've got the top of your skull off. Fucking hell! And they're doing brain surgery, and you actually know. In a brain surgery, they keep you conscious. 
he was completely anaesthetised. So she's out. She must be having some kind of weird keyhole thing. She's being trepanned. <laughs> Let's assume she's being trepanned. She's got her eyes taped shut, ears plugged, and can hear exactly what the surgeons are talking about. Because you know they have a chat while they're doing it. Yeah. Or they're playing music while they're doing it. Scalpel. Suck tube. What are you doing the weekend? Playing golf. Yeah, most. You know, that kind of shit. I kind of think a brain surgeon would be concentrating a hell of a lot. That's their way of concentrating. I'm talking about golf. Yeah. It's a relaxed environment, isn't it? So, most NDEs... Say, NDEs. NDEs. Say their NDEs have changed them. Some changes happen right away. Others more gradually over time. Many people who add them need time to integrate the experience. Some people need months, others need years. People who have had distressing NDEs may feel especially challenged to make sense of their distressing experiences. Research shows that the great majority of people who have had NDEs, whether pleasurable or distressing, sooner or later come to see them as beneficial. Often they think their NDEs were the most profound and helpful experiences of their lives. Wow. That's an interesting one. That really is an interesting one. Well, a lot of people probably regret committing suicide as they're doing it. And the ones that are lucky enough to survive it come back and think, fuck me, so glad I, I, I got brought back. I started to regret it, but it was too late kind of thing. Mm. It, yeah. That is a lot of that. A hell of a lot oh, of Oh, Christ, I'd imagine the amount of regret you feel when you realise you're actually do you're doing it for real is... And there's no turning back kind of thing. Yeah, it's, oh, it's oh, massive. I don't know, because they're not in that thinking are they they're thinking that they're doing a good thing they might have been at the start but I, no, no one wants to die deep down let's face it some people maybe but that's just speculation of course it is so. of course it is you never you, we're never going to know the answer to that one sadly no so what causes them in the scientific age it is only natural that people want to understand the biological or physical origins of an experience and a variety of neurological and chemical explanations have been proposed. Lack of oxygen, excess of carbon dioxide, seizure activity in the temporal lobe, the effect of drugs such as DMT, ketamine, hallucination, psychological avoidance of death, normal shutting down of brain activity, and a dozen or more other possibilities. No scientific explanation so far has satisfactorily accounted for all aspects of NDEs or their effects. Numerous patients who are being clinically monitored were known to be well oxygenated have later reported having an NDE during that time. Drugs are not a factor. The characteristics of sleep disorders and NDEs are not identical. Hallucinations are highly individual and produce confusion and hazy memories, exactly the opposite characteristics of NDEs, which tend to share characteristics and be rem remembered vividly for decades as being realer than real. And for every medical cause that's been put forward, there are reasons the NDE researchers say not quite right. And that is the issue, isn't it? Mm. That's exactly what it is. It's not quite right. How can something be real than real? I don't know. I'm that's not in the what matrix. I don't understand. What is real? This now. What we're is doing. it? You sure? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. What's real? This. How, can you, how do you know this is real? Because mm. I can see it. I can touch it. I can feel it. I can what is that real? It. You can see and touch things in your dreams, can't you? No. Don't you? No, all his dreams. To an extent. All his dreams are all fucking... To an extent, yes, but... You can't truly taste and smell. You can't. You just, it's just a memory of it. How do you know this isn't or, a memory? Or a... How do you know this isn't a dream? Yeah. How do you know this isn't a dream? How do you know this isn't a simulation? Because it's not. How do you know? You don't. It could be the Matrix for you, know. Hundred percent, can we? There's an old Chinese proverb. It's, yeah. It's like, yeah. It's, it's all bollocks. If I dream I'm a butterfly when I'm asleep, when I'm awake, am I? Maybe I'm the butterfly dreaming I'm a human. Yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong. As many a times throughout my life, I've thought, how do I know I'm actually awake and not just dreaming? But then you just realise that everything seems to be making sense. And dreams don't make sense. Well, they can do. Because one minute you sat here, the next minute I walk through the door, I'm in fucking butlins. 
You know what I mean? Christ, your dreams are dull. Going to work, going to Butlins. Hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on. Is that the best you dream about? <laughs> Christ, yeah. I, could tell you, I could tell you some dreams I've had, but I don't think I'd be let back on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Yours are going to work and going to Butlins. <laughs> Actually, going to Butlins on the forklift. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Two for one, eh? <laughs> You're moving the chalets about. <laughs> Is Pick, it a... Picking up them ladies, mate. <laughs> yes. Put on a pallet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's on a pallet oh, no. Sit on that, lovely. Sit on that big test. I'll take you to heaven and back. Oh, I'll take you to at least 14 <laughs> metres high. <laughs> This one's got an extendable so that's mast. A fucking good fork, that. It's, it's got an extendable years. mast. <laughs> It's heaven. You can have what you want. <laughs> it's not real. I went to say foot. <laughs> Thousands of documented NDEs challenge mainstream Western thinking and belief systems. Expectations about an afterlife may be challenged and some people abruptly develop radically new interests and abilities after an NDE. One subject of debate is whether consci- the consciousness resides exclusively in the physical brain, so I guess that is of a soul. Mm-hmm. For example, many people who have an NDE accurately report events that occurred around their bodies when they were unconscious or even clinically dead in at least one case. When clinical monitoring clearly showed no brain activity, some NDEs have revealed family secrets, such as the existence of a never-mentioned sibling. According to the prevailing belief system of industrialised societies, these things are scientifically impossible. Hmm. Well, look. That, that's a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. If, as we mentioned, mentioned before. never mentioned sibling. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, like, oh, yeah. Your brother was... Your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> your brother was your uncle. Yeah, you might... Your, your auntie no, might I thought, like, off. you know, like, you might have had, like, mentally challenged... Kid, he went into a home or something. Not your brother was your uncle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> it's happened in some families. <laughs> Can your brother be your uncle? You'd <laughs> be your dad's brother. So does that mean your other brother is your dad? <laughs> so your older brother would be your dad. <laughs> And then your other brother would be your don't brother. Have, don't overthink it. Be your uncle. Don't overthink it. It's only happened in a family somewhere. But you'd also be your own uncle. Yeah. <laughs> no, it can't happen. It's probably happened somewhere. It's really, it can't happen. Of course it can happen. Or maybe there was like Why a brother or sister happen? that was adopted. I was thinking something like that. It's happened in fucking Brosley, I guarantee. And Dorley. Hey! <sighs> hey. <laughs> Come on, I've seen your web toes. <laughs> oh, sorry, su- fucking southern boy, where you're all fucking inbred down there. You shandy drinking fuckwit. <laughs> so I've got some, near, some accounts of near-death experiences. In a 2001 study by renowned cardiologist Pim Van Lommel, I've never heard of him, but I don't he's renowned, a man who has been in a deep coma later told a nurse that he recognised her. He told her that he saw where she had placed his dentures during resuscitation efforts and then described the cart where she placed them. And they were precisely there as he described it. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Explain that one. That's the problem, isn't it? That is the issue. Huh. But is it that you're... Are you still seeing as they're doing it? Is it? The brain's the last thing to die. People... They always reckon that people who have had their heads cut off, for example, can see up to oh. eight seconds Saying after. that, that can be explained. He saw where she had placed his dentures during... Resuscitation, but he was in a coma and presumably had his eyes shut. Or was that... Yeah. Uh... So that's actually what that podcast on today is. That the reason the mouth and the eyes are often wide open, even though that person is unconscious, is because the body has relinquished control of muscles... Mm. And it takes muscles to close your eyes and mouth. You physically can't do it anymore. So if he's seen that, like, you know, during the resuscitation, then he's gone into a coma. And then that's woke, what I thought, Woke yeah. up from the coma and then gone, oh, I remember. Where, that was the last thing I saw. 
Yeah, well, if it, that's that's okay if it was in that room, Mike. If yeah. she'd gone out the room and put it into a different, it doesn't no. elaborate. Does it, it doesn't say whether he was. It doesn't say whether he's conscious when. I'm presuming the card is in the room, because it's probably the crash cart. Mm. So he's in a coma. She he take, crashes. They come in, resuscitate. Take his teeth out. Put them on the car. Yeah. Start because you you've got to. You don't want when you put the the. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. This Pete, you'll know this more than me. The oxygen, the mask over the mouth and the nose, and you pump the incubation air. Tubes, incubation like, tubes. Oh, the, oh, the pumps. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're going to take out the teeth, aren't you, if they've got a full set of dentures, because if they slip down the throat, yeah, they're fucked. Yeah, yeah. So Definitely. you've got to take them out first before you do anything. Yeah. And you're probably going to put them on the car, because they're out of the way then. Yeah. They've the, taken the car away. Likely, can't find he, his dentures yet. He could have been somewhat in some kind of weird, lucid, fucking awake state and seen that. Yeah, I fully agree with Without that. Without being fully conscious, but if he's crashing, his eyes may well be open. That's the thing, because obviously, that's what I said, you know, people say, oh, your eyes are open during it. Yeah, because it takes muscles to keep your eyes shut. You've, your body's relinquished control of that. So his eyes may well have been open. He may well have seen it. But his, his brain is projecting him above the fucking room because he's leaving his body. That's And that's what... That's what we do, isn't it? That's one of the most common th- things. I'm guessing if he needed resuscitating, he's dead at that point. Yeah. So how but can he see when he's he dead? Might, he might have got his eight seconds, like when he had your head cut off. Yeah, maybe. Moving on. A near-death experience where a child meets relatives. One man who had... Dead been, relatives. Dead relatives, well, obviously. <laughs> Just a child meets relatives <laughs> at a pleasant <laughs> Sunday afternoon, Sunday dinner, is it? Just clarifying. <laughs> there were some presences there. There were ladies. I didn't know them at the time. They were so loving and so wonderful, and I just didn't want to go back. I didn't see any pictures of them until I was an adult. But I said, oh, yeah, I recognise them, obviously. They were my great-grandmothers who had died years before I was born. So, that's, that's mm. again, that's an odd one. But is that a case of... I can't get it. I know the human brain is trained to remember faces. And some people are better remembering faces than others. I don't do names. I'm better with faces. Some people are different. Is it a thing where it's just a bit of like it's years later? It doesn't say how years, how many years yeah. later. Oh yeah, that was them. Depends how vividly he remembers this. He could have misremembered it after all them years. I think the children ones aren't so compelling as the adult ones. In all fairness, in some ways, well, they're more simple and basic, aren't they? Well, they haven't got the meeting Jesus for a start. Often, people will lay their near-death experiences as a review of their lives. Though life review experiences cannot be deemed scientifically vertical, they are worth noting. They can have a profound effect on the NDE and sometimes cause them to re-examine their life and morals. Below is a, uh, is, there's a doctor's description of the life review of an NDE patient. When he realised collision was imminent, the patient said that time seemed to slow down as he hit his brakes and went into an uncontrollable slide. Have you ever had the, the time slowing down? Yeah. Many, yeah. many times. Yeah. When they yeah. made a fuck up on the road. Mm. Not yeah. driving, yeah. You had that. Not so much in that context, but in many, many, many different circumstances. I come around a, a sort of a, a corner and it went it, and it drifted and I hadn't me- meant to drift mm. it. Normally when the child's about Time to fall off. Time slowed down. Normally, yeah. normally when one of the children's about to fall off something and you get there in the nick of time because time seems to slow down and you can see it happening. It's like... Mm. It's a weird experience, isn't or you it? Drop your, or, or you drop your drink. I don't drink. think I've ever had it. You drop oh, a drink and it goes in slow motion. Oh no, they're always fast, they are. Yeah. I've had it in slow motion. I dropped my favourite glass a few a couple of months ago and that went in slow motion. Yeah. I, saw it, like that, yeah. I saw it go down and I went to reach my hand out and I was just too late and it bounced off because it hit the bottom and it bounced up. I'm, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. And then he goes like, Psh. time sped up again. sped back up and you just were like, sped. bastard. Yeah, yeah. You had your first chance and that was it. That was it. That was it. It was destined to break. Then I bought another one. So I had made a trooper glass. So after the uncontrollable slide, he then seemed to pop out of his body. While in this state, he had a life review which consisted of brief pictures, flashes of his life. 
His car struck the truck and the truck bed crashed through the window, causing multiple injuries to his head and chest. Oh, shit. Medical reports show that he was in a coma and nearly died. Yet he had a vivid sensation of leaving his physical body and entering into darkness. He had the feeling of moving up through a dark tunnel towards a point of light. Suddenly, a being filled with love and light appeared to him. Now he had a second life review, one guided by the being of light. He felt bathed in love and compassion as he reviewed the moral choices he'd made in his lifetime. He suddenly understood that he was an important part of the universe and that his life had a purpose. I don't like this life as you business. Who's this guy then? Surely, like, we'd have heard of him by now. Who? The guy that had the incident, or? This one. It's like. Yeah. Jesus like person. Let's do a life review. The one you've just spoke about. Where is he? He's an important person to the universe. Well, his place really? in the universe. Mm. He finds his place in the universe. That's yeah. what you haven't got to be. He yeah. feels he's an important person yeah. in the universe. That's, and what more can a person ask to do? Is feel that you have importance. Is feel that you you have a, a, a mission. He didn't just misunderstand it, and he said he was an imp- he was impotent. <laughs> <laughs> went, like, You're an impotent part of the universe. <laughs> You're an impotent person. Am I? Oh, I'll go back then. Okay, he said I was important. <laughs> oh man, imagine that you are like. He says, you're an impotent part of the universe, aren't you? It's not your time yet, though. And you're going back, you're like, did you say important or impotent? Like, I can't hear you, important? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you ended up with Hitler. <laughs> Who was to judge me, anyway, apart from myself? Baby Jesus. The baby Jesus. Uh, well, he's only a baby. What's he know? <laughs> he slapped you with his rattle. Fuck him, I'll take it off him. He's a baby. <laughs> You're taking candy from a baby. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My rattle. Taking a rattle off of Jesus. You bonked the baby Jesus on the head with his own rattle, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> that was the test. Everyone hates an do annoying think, child. Do you think God would then, <laughs> would God then appear and smite you, do you think? If you bumped his child's head with I don't recognise his authority <laughs> over me. Does that make you immune to God? Yes. I real? am a God. I, is, <laughs> I am a God. Do <laughs> <laughs> I grow like eight feet tall and <laughs> one punch man him? <laughs> I don't love that show. <laughs> you get a chance to watch One Punch Man. Mm. Okay, so some NDEers report stories of a vertical out of body experience, including travelling through walls to the waiting room where they see their relatives and friends. One patient reported travelling through a wall and seeing a young daughter wearing mismatched plaids, plaids, as you say that, Plads. which was highly unusual. Another woman travelled through a wall and overheard her brother in law in the hospital waiting room talking to a business associate in a very derogatory manner. She was able to report this back to him later. No. So, <laughs> daughter wearing mismatched plaids, so was she actually wearing mismatched plaids when she come round or not? It doesn't really... That's it. Say, does it? The brother-in-law thing is weird, although he might just be a twat. Hmm. Why is a business associate in a hospital when you're is it, is it a brother-in-law, so what's, he, what, what's this person? Yeah, no, what's it? Why is he to she to her? He's he's married to her brother, her daughter, her sister. That's it. I always get confused with these relations. I know you think your brother's your uncle. (laughs) Could happen. It's happened somewhere in Dooley. It's not happened in Dooley. Fuck it has. It hasn't. It's basically happened in Norfolk. It's happened down south. She's overheard that conversation then. Apparently so. Um, was the waiting room next to the bed she was in? She hears the walls. With a big fucking yeah. window so he, she can see a door or whatever. That's the other thing. You yeah. don't know, but this is what people are claiming mm. to. And that's the thing is, are they seeing stuff before? They might be, they might, everyone might think they're unconscious. Are they unconscious? You know, you ever got to see a relative who's, like I said, it's a, it's a so-called death scream 
you think it looks like they're in agony. You know, their eyes are open, their mouths open, but as I said, it takes muscles to close them. Mm. And the body has surrendered control of that at this point. They could still be completely conscious. This one's the most fascinating. Some blind people report being able to see during their NDE. Psychiatrist Brian Weiss tells a story of a blind elderly woman. She suffered a cardiac arrest during her stay in a hospital where I, Weiss, was the chairman of the psychiatry department. She was unconscious as a resurrection team tried to revive her. Resuscitation. Sorry, is there a, what did I say? Resurrection. <laughs> resurrection team. They should be called that. They should be called they the resurrection team. They should be called team. the resus team. They should be called the resurrection team. That would be so much cooler. Yeah, it would be. What's Can we just job? refer to it as that from now on? What's your job? I'm part of the resurrection team. Yeah. I'm a some... resurrectionist. Oh, well, that's a grave robber. A resurrector. I suppose that's why they don't call them the resurrection team, because a, a resurrectionist was a grave robber mm. in the 18th century, weren't they? Mm. It's got the word erect in it. It's also got the word erect in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. According to her latest report, she floated out of her body and stood near the window watching the resuscitation. She observed that any pain whatsoever as they thumped her on the chest and pumped air into her lungs. During the resuscitation, a pen fell out of her doctor's pocket and rolled near the same window where her out-of-body spirit was standing and watching. The doctor eventually walked over, picked up the pen and put it back in his pocket and then rejoined the frantic effort to save her and they succeeded. Why is he abandoning a resuscitation? <laughs> Do I pick up his fucking pen? Like I'd be a, livid. Sounds like bullshit to me. I'd know. be livid. <laughs> it's like, this is the first time in my life I can fucking see. And you're resuscitating me. Yeah. And you've abandoned the job to go and pick up your fucking... I'm not paying you. Uh-huh. I'm assuming this is in America. A few days later... She told her doctor that she'd observed the resuscitation team at work during her cardiac arrest. No, he soothingly reassured her. You're probably hallucinating because of the lack of oxygen to the brain. And this can happen when the heart starts beating. But I saw your pen roll over to the window, she replied. Then she described the pen and other details of the resuscitation. The doctor was shocked. His patient had not only been comatose during the resuscitation, but she'd also been blind for many years. Wow, explain that one. Mm. All right, that's I, just, I just don't believe it. I don't mm. believe that story. I think it's bullshit because no doctor fucking resussing a woman is going to go over the rooms, pick up a fucking pen that fell out of his pocket. <laughs> you don't know. You, you spot on with highlighting that because that's bullshit. I call bullshit. Administer, administer CPR, hang on, I'm going to get me pen. It's just fucking <laughs> the, bullshit. The, pa- the paddles are charging, I'll be back in two seconds. Absolute <laughs> fucking codswallet. Actually, their paddles don't need to charge. It's all automatic nowadays. Automatic, uh, yeah, we, we, even when you use on, the, the automatic defib, it's just charging, yeah. administering shock. But the paddles they have in the hospital, they're wired up anyway, aren't they? Yeah. They're just like, clear, poof. And that's it, you know. It's... But then, it is another one for you, right? So if they're using the paddles on her, she's not actually died. No, she's in cardiac arrest. She's yeah. not actually died. And remember, I suppose, as you are, let's say she's she's crashing, if you're crashing, and you have your NDE, it says drugs aren't doing anything, but they're pumping you full of stimulants. Yeah. You know, it's not just the CPR and blowing air into your lungs and eventually the, yeah, the paddles. Adrenaline, adrenaline for a start. That'll shot you with adrenaline straight to the heart, and trying like, to go and in like again. We were saying earlier, all the drugs that our own body can create start kicking in as well. Totally. Totally. I, 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 there was no stories there well, that had any real fucking juice to them. What you've got is that those individual stories may not have you may not have any juice to them. What you have got is a lot of people having the same things. Now, she may or may not have seen that pen fall across the floor. She may or may not have had been hanging out of her body or by, hanging by the window. But a lot of people have had the same <laughs> I bet thing. the doctor was hanging out of uh, her body, wasn't he? No, Yay. it's not Jimmy Savile. <laughs> <laughs> She's nearly dead. So, it's not necrophilia, but she can't stop me. 
Dr. Samuel, get your chicken out of her mouth. She can't we're say trying to no. put a, We're trying to put an incubation line in. <laughs> Dr. Savile. I bet he was cool, fucking Dr. Savile. Because he was a big part. Now then, now then, I can fit my dick and an incubation tube in her mouth. Oh, dear. You're all sick. That took a sour turn. Uh, you're all sick. <laughs> well, all right, so where are, where are we at? See, I'm quite a spiritual person, yeah? But I call bullshit on pretty much everything. You're quite a spiritual person. Yeah. In what yeah, way? I believe I believe in spirits and things like that. I'm not. <laughs> like, when I say spiritual, I don't mean I'm spiritual as in holy or anything like that. I mean like I believe in spirits and things. I believe there's something else out there, not God, nothing like that. Bigfoot. So this should be right up your alley then, and you're well, calling no, bullshit. No, and I call bullshit on it because there's no, there's absolutely no, there's nothing in this whole thing that's really given any thing other than the suggestion of it is just a dream, at the state of fucking demise. What your body does as a as a defense mechanism. To protect your own fucking feelings from what's actually happening to you. Why would you explain the blind woman? No, you don't believe it. I you? just think it's absolute bullshit. Of if a it story. was true, though, you, that doesn't if explain that. If it's true, though, he's the worst fucking doctor in the world. And he's admitted it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's bull. It's a bullshit story that some reporter has just made up. Because let's face it, anybody can write fucking anything on the internet and put it out there. Say, hi, my name's Doctor Raj. You and just, people have been believe what they fucking written. Are you written. telling me you don't believe Magicenter.com? No. Got he's, are, you, are you telling me you don't believe the internet? <laughs> <laughs> you understand where I'm coming from, don't you? Anyone I do can get you. Fucking write anything. But this so. is, you know, from, uh, uh, yeah. But this is uh, a lot of collective, you know. And but again, yeah, we don't know. Head. We don't know it's true, do we? There's no, no there's no real proof of any of this. And it has been portrayed in films and, so and many cinema, times. hasn't it? That people see see the light or see... It's portrayed in a fucking Bible, for fuck's sake, that kind of shit, isn't it? Yeah. It's all within it. It's, oh, I, yeah, I think it's learnt behavioural... Learnt behavioural visions, as in, i.e. dreams. Dreaming, it's, your brain's going, oh, you don't want to see this, mate. Because this is why cultures that have fucking... That are just living in sand, of dreams of living in sand. Cultures that fucking living in a big city have dreams about fucking living in a big city. That it's all relative. Now, if somebody's in tunnels, guess what? They fucking live in a tunnel, probably. It's, it's, it's some of us dream about going to work and then buns. Yeah, that's my point. I think it. I'm, if you ever have an NDE and it's about driving your truck and going to Butlins. Then I'll know it is just a fucking dream. <laughs> Claire, choke him out. <laughs> you enjoy it? No. Oh, you probably wouldn't be masturbating. He's got that cushion across his lap already. Obviously, that's my opinion. <laughs> and everyone is free to their own opinion. Yep. But I just think. I'm on the fence. I, I, I oh, you're like, not on the fence, are you? I feel like a Vulcan and I go logical and logically, what my explanation makes sense. Nothing else does. <laughs> yeah, I think we need more evidence, evidence hunting. Proper evidence. To gather more evidence, yeah. Claire? Yeah, I think it's lack of oxygen and, and all that. And your brain just going, what the fuck? And reeling through anything and everything. I, I'd love to think that your brain will do some nice stuff for you when you're on the way out. I don't get the spiritual thing. If I had an NDE and I saw Jesus, I'd be very disappointed. But... I'm like, really? This is the best you've got. Where's Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> <laughs> where's, where's Anakin Skywalker? Where's Jar Jar riding a clown spider? <laughs> <laughs> where's my toothpick? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going down swinging. <laughs> I'm going to stab that fucking gun gun through his eye. But even so, I can't go for it from a spiritual point of view because it's just not me. I don't believe in any of that. Do I think that your brain's going to flood your system? You don't, know what, you don't know what No, but do I was after death, do you? That's it, the thing. You know, and it would be lovely. It would be lovely. It'd be nice mm. if, I, if I saw Blue and me relatives and Max yeah. eventually. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be really nice, but it'd be a very com- 
But it could also be my brain just flooding me with DMT and I was going, Yeah, yeah. comforting you. Oh, comforting me. Home to your family. Yeah. Yep. So, um, well, I think we'll we'll just think we just fade into nothing. I think we've come to a pretty much unanimous decision on no, this. I, one. I've, always had, I've always had an opinion to close that the only reason we all people think an afterlife exists is because a human brain can't imagine being dead. The loss of the loved ones and things like that, isn't it? Yeah, but it still doesn't mean that it, there isn't an afterlife. It doesn't. It doesn't. That's why I'm on the fence because we, we never know until we get there. I See guess. you in hell, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to be seeing you in the afterlife. Mate, <laughs> We're both going to be in hell, still pushing that board with that mountain, yeah. <laughs> still playing bloody football manager. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really hell. No. Obviously, you never win. That's the no, thing. No, 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 doesn't no, matter. No. What, doesn't matter who you buy. I was going to say you're destined to like be like the worst team ever, and that's all you're ever going to. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't matter who you buy. Yeah. Mm. They all go shit. <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi all in their yeah. prime. Can't score a goal. For Can't a score a goal. Get a, get four point five every game. <laughs> Still, ah, life's a bitch, isn't it? Life's a bitch. Then you die. The afterlife might be a bitch too. Who knows? And on that note, let's call it a day. I've been Ben. Thanks for listening. Do as thou wilt. And love is the light. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of Lads to Crowley recently. On preparation. Never really catch that. I've been Mike, thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you. Hello, I've been Pete. Have a nice week.